This house located at 92 Second Street, Fall River, Massachusetts, is now a bed and breakfast. However, on the 4th of August, 1892, the unthinkable happened. 70-year-old Andrew J. Borden and his 65-year-old wife, Abby, was bludgeoned to death in their own home in broad daylight. Living in the house at the time of the murders was Andrew Borden's two adult unmarried daughters, 41-year-old Emma on the left and 32-year-old Lizzie. Emma was away from home visiting friends some 15 miles from Fall River. She had been gone several days when the murders occurred. Therefore, she was never a suspect. Lizzie was at home at the time, and so was Bridget Sullivan, the Borden's live-in maid. 26-year-old Maggie, as she was sometimes called, had been working for the Borden's for over two years. Maggie's bedroom was located on the third floor up in the attic. The only other person was a visitor, Uncle John Morris, the brother of Emma and Lizzie's mother, Sarah. He had arrived the night before the homicides at Mr. Borden's request on a business matter. He had left the house on business before the incident and returned after the bodies were discovered. Emma and Lizzie's mother, Sarah Morris Borden, had passed away at the age of 39 from uterine congestion when Emma was 12 and Lizzie was 2. And this is Sarah with her oldest daughter, Emma. Before Sarah died, she asked Emma to promise always to look after Lizzie. And for the next three years, she will serve as a surrogate mother to Lizzie. So naturally, there was some resentment when Andrew married 38-year-old Spencer, Abby Gray. Lizzie was five at the time and soon was calling Abby mother. Emma was 15 and always insisted that Abby was her stepmother, not mother, and always called her Mrs. Borden. Abby's family were of modest means and Mr. Borden was of considerable wealth, owning real estate and manufacturing investments, along with banking interest, leaving the girls to speculate that Abby's family was after their inheritance, especially after Andrew bought a house in 1887 for Abby to let her sister live in. Resentment became so strong that the girls would not eat breakfast with Andrew and Abby. They seldom spoke and would take trips to get away from the stepmother. This is the floor plan of the Borden's home, the first floor. As you walk through the front door, you enter the front entrance where the stairs to the second floor is located. To the left of the entrance is the parlor. Straight through the entrance is the setting room where Andrew Borden's body was found by daughter Lizzie. To the left of the sitting room is the dining room. Straight through the sitting room is the kitchen. To the left of the kitchen is the back entrance with inside stairs that leads up to the second floor Borden's bedroom that Andrew and Abby used. It was also the stairs to the attic bedroom used by the maid. Going up to the second floor from the front entrance Go up the stairs to the landing. To the left of the landing is the guest room where Uncle John had slept. It is also where Abby's body was found. She had gone up to make up the guest bed. From the guest room is Lizzie's bedroom on the right and Emma's bedroom on the left. In the rear is Andrew and Abby's bedroom. To the left of their bedroom is the back stairs that they always used. The door between Lizzie's room and Andrew and Abby's room was always locked on both sides. On the morning of August the 4th, the maid, Maggie, comes down the back stairs to fix breakfast. Her attic bedroom was in the back over Andrew and Abby's room. 
Soon, Andrew, Abby, and John Morris will come down to eat breakfast. Lizzie slept late, and after breakfast, Andrew and John will go into another room to discuss business. Around 8.45, John leaves out the back door and plans to return around 11.30 that same morning. At 9, Andrew will leave for a walk downtown, as he usually did. Lizzie will come downstairs to the kitchen for coffee and Johnny cakes. Abby will ask Maggie if she would wash the windows inside and out, while Abby goes upstairs to make up the guest bedroom where Uncle John had slept. She will come back down once for a short time only to get clean pillowcases and then go back upstairs. It'll be the last time she'll be seen alive. Maggie will be outside for almost an hour washing windows and talking to the neighbor's maid over the back fence. Lizzie will be inside the house doing chores. The coroner said that Abby was killed around 9 or 9.30. She'll be laying upstairs on the guest bedroom floor for one to one and a half hours before discovered, with 19 hatchet blows to the head. The first blow was facing her assassin. Around 11, Andrew Borden returns home. Maggie was now inside cleaning windows on the first floor. She'll let Mr. Borden in the front door as they keep all doors locked and he had forgotten his key. Mr. Borden will first walk through the house and go up to his bedroom for a few minutes. His bedroom could only be reached through the rear stairs. Then he'll return to the sitting room sofa to rest, as he always did. He supposedly asked Lizzie where his wife Abby was. She told him that Abby had left the house to go visit a sick friend. Maggie went up the back stairs to her room to rest after washing windows and feeling sick. Maggie testified that she had been in her room some 20 minutes or so when Lizzie screamed, Maggie, come down quick. Someone has killed father. Lizzie stated that she had just left father to go out to the barn to search for lead sinkers for an upcoming fishing trip. When she returned to the house, she found her father. According to the coroner, Mr. Borden had been struck 11 times on the face and head with a hatchet. Lizzie then runs to the rear stairs and calls for Maggie. Lizzie sends Maggie to get Dr. Bowen while waiting at the back door, afraid that the killer might still be in the house. Soon the house was covered with police and neighbors. Abby's body was discovered laid beside the guest bed by Maggie and Mrs. Crawford, a neighbor. During the investigation, Lizzie gave conflicting statements, and soon she had become a prime suspect. The defense said that her inconsistencies was due to the fact that doctors had prescribed her morphine. The local druggist, Eli Bench, told police that the day before the murders, Lizzie had come to his store to buy Prussyl acid, a poison. He refused to sell it to her without a prescription. The court refused to allow the testimony, saying that it was irrelevant because she never did get any. Lizzie said that she used the Prussic acid to clean her seal skin cape. It has the properties of cyanide. A telegram was sent to Emma describing the events and she returned home that afternoon. Alice Russell, a neighbor and friend of Emma's and Lizzie's, was quickly summoned to the house and will spend several nights with the sisters after the crime. Uncle John Morris will also stay at the house. Policemen will be stationed to watch the house. Alice Russell will testify that a few days after the murders, she saw Lizzie burn a blue dress in the kitchen stove, saying that it had paint on it. Lizzie knew that her sister Emma and Alice was there. 
so didn't try to hide what she was doing. It was believed that she was wearing a blue dress the day of the murders. Lizzie had several blue dresses. It was Alice's testimony at the inquest about the dress burning that caused Judge Blissdale to charge Lizzie with murder. Lizzie would be taken to the Taunton Jail where they had facilities to house women. The trial will last 14 days, and this is the jury that after only 90 minutes found Lizzie Borden innocent, although she never testified in her own behalf. After the acquittal, Lizzie and Emma purchased a new home that they called Maplecroft. It was located in the better part of town. Two years after the murders, the sister purchases a 10-foot blue granite monument for their parents at a cost of more than $2,000. Public opinion had turned against Lizzie in the Fall River, and even her church friends were no longer friends. So Lizzie began traveling to New York and Boston to visit the theater that she had always loved. She became friends with actress Nancy O'Neill and a group of theater people. Lizzie began throwing parties at Maplecroft. No one really knows what went on between Lizzie and Nancy O'Neill, except that they had a close relationship. But serving liquor at a party even with theatrical people, was entirely not acceptable in Fall River. To people in Fall River, including her sister Emma, it was one of the worst things that you could do. After one such party in 1905, after a heavy argument, Emma would move out of Maplecroft and leave Fall River. It's been said that the sisters rarely spoke, if ever. Emma never explained what caused the breakup between the sisters. According to Nancy O'Neill, years after Lizzie's death, she said that Lizzie often visited her parents' grave and that she was very kind and loved animals, even leaving money to their care. On June 1, 1927, Lizzie Andrew Borden will pass away of pneumonia at the age of 66. She'll be buried in the family plot with her father, mother, and stepmother at Oak Grove Cemetery in Fall River, Massachusetts. Only 10 days later, Emma will pass away on June the 10th, 1927, at the age of 76 in Newmarket, New Hampshire. She will be buried in the family plot at Fall River with her sister and family.